Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. As you know, I'm a doctor but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. Now today's video has been requested a lot, finally we've managed to get around to it and is that the question is, is microneedling at home safe for skin of colour? And it's an excellent question. The reason why it's an excellent question is because obviously you're causing micro injury when you are piercing the skin with needles. And anyone with skin of colour who understands skin of colour and loves to learn about skin of colour understands that the melanocytes are large, the cells that produce the pigment melanin. Because those cells are large, they are easily triggered. As you've all heard me say before, one scratch, one bite, one burn, and we hyperpigment. We cannot afford to damage our skin barrier or irritate our skin too much. So there is a fine line when it comes to treating skin of colour. And that's really why this whole channel exists. As you know, this channel has never been sponsored, it will never be sponsored, and it's a resource for us and our children to come to for evidence-based information specifically for skin of colour. So I'm really um, happy we're doing this video today because I know a lot of you want to try microneedling at home and you want to know how do you do it, what is it, what are the costs, um, how effective is it, if you do do it, what do you put on top, um, how do you choose, how do you prevent yourself from getting more pigmentation. So today's video is covering all of that, including my favourite um, products to apply after you've actually done treatment because you can increase the um, absorption when you create little channels into the skin. If that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So first of all, what is a derma roller or a microneedle, whatever you want to call it? So it's a roller that looks a little bit like a jade roller, but with needles. Can you see that at the end? I don't know if my phone is focusing. So this is one millimeter, these needles. Um, they do look quite scary when you look at them for the first time. Um, I know I was scared when I looked at them for the first time, but actually we'll go through that in a second. But this is what it looks like. So you can purchase these derma rollers in different lengths, 0.2 millimeters, 0.5 millimeters, one millimeter, two millimeter, four millimeter, and sometimes even more. Um, and that's important because the skin, ha you have different thickness of skin on different parts of your face and your body. So around the eye area, the skin is much thinner than the face, which is thinner than um, if you're trying to treat stretch marks on the buttocks for example, so you do actually want to look at what you're trying to do and then which millimetre is appropriate for that. So the mechanism of action is that when you cause a micro injury and you are piercing the skin, you are triggering collagen synthesis. And this is good for a number of reasons. Number one, it's very good for anti-aging, so for tightening and firming up the skin. It's good for wrinkles. It's good for scars. Some people also use it for acne, PIE marks, red marks. Um, the data isn't so clear on that and I don't understand the mechanism of action for PIE, but a lot of people do use it for that too, so it's important to be aware of it. The good thing about microneedling is that it's minimally invasive and there's no downtime. Um, and so actually you can do it in the evening and the following day, you know, you go back to work and you're absolutely fine. You would avoid this, however, if you are on blood thinners, if you're pregnant or if you're um, doing chemotherapy. Now, even though it's minimally invasive, you do need to take some precautions before you microneedle the skin. So you would stop retinol that week because retinol can dry the skin. And I don't want you to do this just before you're about to do a procedure. I would want you to avoid any exfoliation. So that includes chemical or physical exfoliation. That means avoid low pH uh, products on the skin. I would also be aware of waxing or shaving the skin before the reason that week. The reason is that that's another form of exfoliation. When you are shaving the skin, you are actually removing the top layer of skin cells. And the same thing happens with wax, whether it's strip wax or hot wax, you that is what is happening. That's where your skin suddenly looks like it's glowing after you've shaved, after you've waxed your skin. Um, and so I wouldn't do that the week bef the week that you're going to be derma rolling either. If you are asking me, but Dr. V, it's my face. I need to remove hair. Um, I would say thread. Threading is probably 
the best form of hair removal, temporary hair removal, that doesn't affect your skin. So yes, your skin might feel a little bit red that day, but actually, you know, a day later, your skin should be absolutely fine and I'm happy for you to demo all the skin. So the next question I get asked is, okay, great, Dr. V, so how exactly, step-by-step, step, do I do this at home? So first thing you want to do is to disinfect your derma roller. So use 70% isopropyl alcohol, leave it in there for about five to 10 minutes. At the same time, I would not only have cleaned your face, but also toned your face using a non-alcohol based toner. So a hydrating toner without any denatured alcohol, because what that does is first of all, it's cleaning the skin, but it's also hydrating the skin before you're about to do a procedure. And that's very important. You want your skin to be in a healthy state, um, not a dry, irritated state. Now, the next stage, I next the thing that I do next is because I'm pathetic and I'm a baby and uh, I numb the skin uh, using 5% Emla numbing cream. Um, yes, because I don't know, I'm just, I'm where I am pathetic and it is what it is. But I think a lot of you <laughs> have a higher pain threshold than me. You know, I say this and I've actually had two C-sections and even when I went for my COVID jab and I'm like squealing or I go for my smear test and I'm like, crying whoever's doing it looks at me and goes you've had two children and I'm like, oh, it's just terrible yeah so I never really grew up so Emla for me but uh, if you can do it without Emla uh, good for you so for me my main areas are my laughter lines and what I do is I basically derma roll in two directions so I derma roll in one direction so I'll go so I'm going vertically um, and then you lift your derma roller you don't drag it across and then you go horizontally so we used to say you could do it in four different directions, but recent studies have shown that actually doing it in two directions um, it means less injury, um, less, than, less of an uneven pattern of collagen formation. And so right now, this is what we currently recommend is to do it in two directions. Now in my clinic, we do derm roll around the eye area, but I would never recommend you do this at home. It's not something I would ever do to myself at home. It's a very tricky and need a professional to do that for you, um, someone with a lot of experience. So I wouldn't say avoid this area completely. Um, I'm happy for you to do the crow's feet and I'm happy for you to do your laughter lines, um, even you know the rest of the face to tighten up um, the rest of your face is also fine to do, but please avoid this area. Now, immediately afterwards, you have basically caused inflammation and micro injury to the skin. So the skin is gonna look flush. It might look red or burgundy color, and you might see little dots of blood. Um, if you're using a micro needle that's more than 0.5 millimeters, you might see these dots. If you're using 0.2 millimeter, you're unlikely to see anything. Um, but if you see this, those little dots, it's nothing to be afraid of. And, um, you know, that's closed up by the following day. Then what you do with your micro needle uh, or your derma roller is that you basically you take the end and you rinse it in soapy water because what you want to do is to remove the proteins, your skin proteins that are stuck in your derma roller. So when you do that, please make sure you're not knocking the side of the cup or whatever you're using because I don't want you to blunt the, the, the needles. So you do that and then you can disinfect it using your isopropyl alcohol and then just let it air dry. I literally let it sit in its case like this so it's not touching anything um, and it rests like that and it air dries. Don't use a towel or anything or tissue to try and dry it because then you're going to get little bits of fluff stuck in your derma roller, which is absolutely not what we want. If you want, you can use products afterwards, but there are two things I want you to remember. Number one, the product should be nape safe. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils in that serum that you're going to apply. And the second thing you must remember is that it should be a skin neutral product. So something that's 4.5 to 5.5 pH. The worst thing you can do is having dermal the skin and then applied an acid to the skin. Anything less than four um, is going to irritate and burn the skin um, and that can lead to pigmentation. That would be a big problem for skin of color because obviously with us, if you cross that line, um, it's gonna lead to hyperpigmentation and that can take months or even years to get rid of. So ingredients I want you to look for in a serum or cream you apply on top would be things like 
aloe vera, uh, propanthenol, these are anti-inflammatories. You might want to use niacinamide. You might want to use skin brightness. So a vitamin C derivative, something like tetrahexyl decaloscorbate or sodium ascorbyl phosphate um, or peptides. So if you're looking for anti-aging ingredients, then peptides um, are a very good uh, thing to put on top. I was just thinking, actually, we haven't really talked much about peptides um, and there doesn't seem to be much information online for you. Um, if you are interested in, in me doing a whole video just on peptides for skin of color, can you write down below peptides, please, into the comment section so I know how many of you are interested in it. If enough of you are interested, of course, I'll make the video for you. Um, okay, that's a side comment. <laughs> right, moving on to products that I recommend for Demerolic. Okay, so number one, I would say Drunk Elephant Proteiny is great for anti-aging. It's got nine different peptides in it and it's nave safe. Uh, the next one I love is the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid 2%, um, which is very good. For, it's a humectant, so it's a water magnet, um, and we do lose humectants as we age, glucosaminoglycans. We lose them as we age and our skin gets drier. And so this is going to help with plumping up the skin cells at the skin and making, and making the appearance of wrinkles less. Uh, if you're looking for something for pigmentation, then I do like Good Molecules Discoloration Serum because the pH is 5.5 and that really is essential. Um, I wouldn't use, if you do have the facial pigmentation kit, um, which is your 8 to 10 tyrosinase inhibitors for skin of color, do not use this with your derma rolling uh, because um, it's, it, it's far too irritating with derma rolling. The next thing I would say is if you are using Derma Rolling for PIE, then the ingredient, the product I love is Face Theory As Clear A15 Serum. Um, again, the pH is 4.5. Um, and even that product on its own is good for PIE. So those would be my recommendations to use after Derma Rolling. Um, I, I realized I didn't actually make it clear why you shouldn't use this at the same time. It's because it's got three forms of vitamin A in it. It's got retinaldehyde, retinol, and retinol palmitate. Um, and these three, these three things all increase cell turnover. And do you remember I said at the beginning, don't use your retinol the week before you derma roll. Um, and so that's the reason I would avoid this. Now, there are a lot of mistakes that I see being made when it comes to microneedling. Uh, number one is do not wear makeup for 24 hours after you've derma rolled. Avoid swimming 24 hours after. Also sweating, you know, going to the gym, sauna, these things that I would avoid for 24 hours. For home use, I would say start off with 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters. I would just do that once a week or once every other week until your skin can tolerate it. Once you have understood how it works and you feel comfortable, then you can scale up to one millimeter. But one millimeter, I would say, is the absolute maximum um, to do at home. I do prefer, if I'm talking to millions of people, I do prefer stick with your 0.5 millimeter until you really do feel comfortable. Um, and you've done that for a few months, then then try going up to one millimeter, but with caution. If you are microneedling scars or stretch marks, then you're probably going to need about two millimeters, maybe even more. And for that, I would say use a professional because it's very painful and you really do want the area numb before you do that. The other thing to remember is please do not do this on live acne because what you're doing is you're spreading that bacteria across the face and your skin is already inflamed. It would be a big mistake to do it on top of live acne. So please, please don't do that. Don't forget to download your free ebook for skincare for skin of color. Link is down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic, Skincare by Dr. V, and on TikTok, Dr. Mita Ratan. Any other um, videos you want me to make, please can you write them down below for me? Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.